Hello, I'm Archie Luxury and welcome to the program, fuckers! Hello, fuckers! I've had a hard day today. I've had a really, really hard day. It's one of those days where you say to yourself, is it fucking worth running a YouTube channel? Is it really worth it? And, um... I don't know what to say. It's just really, really fucked. But, um... We'll ponder on there. And uh, the haters, could you just lay off for a little bit? What do you reckon, hey? Just lay off a little bit, you know? Just let me get over this hump. What do you reckon, fuckers? Okay, I got a really... Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Welcome to Viewer Emails. Viewer Emails, fuckers. Viewer Emails. And the first email in is from Kevin. Hello, Kevin. And uh, Kevin came to me and he... he uh, he was asking for some advice, and uh, he said to me, he said, Hi, Archie, I'm still waiting for you to visit here in Sydney again. Drinks on me. Mate, I'm wondering if you'd be able to give me some sage advice on a wedding gift for a lady for about four to $500 Aussie that won't depreciate like most shit that costs that much at your typical Prouds and Angus and Coot bullshit stores. I was thinking along the lines of a pearl necklace, but if you have better suggestions on both the type of gift and where to source it in Oz, I'd greatly appreciate. Of course, if you are able to shed some awesome advice, I'd be happy to throw you a blue note by the way of a donation. Thanks, Kev. And I said to Kev, 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 a couple things. I said, Kev, what's the occasion? What's your relationship to her? Are you thinking new or used? What interests does she have? And Kev said to me, it's a wedding. It's for his sister. She wants something new. And she doesn't really have hobbies. And uh, I said to Kev, look, some great advice for that sort of money. I said, stay away from the pearls. I said, pearls, good pearls are going to be many thousands of dollars. So I said, stay away from that. I said, my, the wife, my, my wife's self-sea pearl necklace, which is a salt water pearl necklace, that was about 17 fucking thousand dollars. So unless you're spending big money, I wouldn't be crossing that. I said, okay, you want something that's not electronic or, you know, something that's going to be fucked in a couple years' time. You want a lifetime keepsake. You want to buy it brand new so we can't get vintage. You want something that's going to be a really good memento. And I said, look, top shelf, I'd be thinking Cartier or Tiffany, Tiffany & Co. I'd be looking at, say, maybe a, a desk clock. Uh, maybe a little bit more you'd need to spend for Cartier, but a desk clock. Or something like a nice fancy silver picture frame from Cartier or Tiffany & Co. Something like that. I said, next rung down, I said, you could go to the discount Royal Dalton shop in the DFO, you know, discount fucking warehouse, discount fucking offloaders, Gaffner. And uh, I know in Brisbane we've got a Royal Dalton shop in the DFO, and they've got uh, all perfect but last season sort of stuff, so maybe a, uh, I said you can get a very nice Royal Dalton picture frame for about 40 Dollar mark, that's a really great gift, but I'd also put something else with it. You could get like a coffee set, a Royal Dalton, Royal Albert sort of coffee set. Um, you could get, you could also, next level, something else, you could go to David Jones or Meyer and get a really great lead crystal decanter with, say, some scotch glasses or, you know, something like that. Something that's precious, heirloomy, and going to be cherished. So, I, I gave Kev a call, and uh, he was really appreciative for the advice. So, nice one, Kev. Let us know what you end up getting, your sister. And uh, that's, that's a really good, uh, really good intentions there. That's really nice to hear. Next viewer email. Next viewer email. And this is from Den Dennis. Dennis, I'm a 28-year-old naval officer, and I noticed that the black experience Black Dial Explorer 1 watches are popular among the officers, particular higher rank officers. Almost everyone seems to wear them on black leather straps or black NATOs. 
I would like to purchase a Rolex Explorer 1 now. The problem is there are so many different serial numbers for the Explorer 1. I think he means model numbers. 14270-1016. Okay, he's mentioned a few there, okay. I'm not a watch expert, and I don't know which of these is the classiest and which will retain their value and which are less regarded by people who know watches. I'd love to know how you rank the various models. Keep up the great vids. Sincerely, Lieutenant Dennis. Sir! Okay, basically this. Forget, okay, those model numbers you've mentioned. The 1016, that is the best one. That is the classic Explorer 2. Uh, a good one of those is somewhere between five to $10,000. The best value for money one, I'd be looking at a 14270. That's the Sapphire, that's the model after the 1016. And they are a relative bargain. They're considered by watch collectors to be a little bit small because they're 36 mils. That's the diameter excluding the crown. So some people think they're a bit small. I think they're a fucking perfect size. I'd have no problem buying one. I think the 14270... Great bang per buck. You can get one, a really, really nice one from anywhere from two and a half to sort of three and a half thousand, uh, depending on condition. They they are just a fucking fantastic watch. Personally, I think the 1016 is a little bit overrated. You're paying a premium because it's a vintage piece. And uh, sorry, I should be flicking my uh, DuPont, a luxury pen, not a fucking, fucking generic generic highlighter so i would be saying to you get the 14270 great value for money great piece great history it's also sapphire crystal so it's a lot more hardier in the war zone situation and uh great piece great piece get that and as your second watch i'd be looking at amiga speedmaster man on the moon it's a great chronograph and as a third piece i'd be looking at maybe a submariner there you go that's three recommendations 1016 is great, but you're paying a premium for vintage. 14270, get a 10 to 15 year old one of those. Great bang per buck. That's the Archie Luxury Buyer's Choice. Okay, fuckers. Next viewer email. And uh, we've got another email here. This is from Rick Alexander. Hi, Archie. You are absolutely right about the coaxial. The Seamaster Professional Coaxial. I just sold one. Bit me in the ass. Bought it from an AD uh, in March 2010. Wore it for about three or four months. Then I got a sub. Just, I got the sub. So I put my Datejust and Seamaster on eBay. I pull the watches out of the safe to take pictures. Everything is fine. Both watches running great. When I'm done, I put the Amiga back in the watch. Set the Datejust on the desk. The Amiga sells Right away, so I ship it off. When the guy gets it, he emails me and tells me it's not running. Fuck, that sucks. Okay, ship it back and I'll give you your money back. Jeez, you've got to be careful. There's scammers out there, fuckers. I buy three used Rolexes off eBay and all three are still running no problem. The only watch that I didn't think would cause problems craps out. The Amiga should rename. Well, hang on a minute. He could be a fraudster. I, I'd, uh, I think he's just trying to fuck you over a bit, so... Um, just make sure there. Okay, thanks for that email. And he's talking about other ideas. Luxury items, custom-made knives, Randall knives, Zeiss optics, uh, Leica, Colt. He's talking about firearms. Yes, sir. I'll see what I can do, okay? I'll see what I can do. Okay, fuckers. Next viewer email. And uh, let's have a look. What's an interesting email that's come in here? We've got one from let's have a look here what do we got we got one here from aaron hi archie i was watching your last viewer emails um where you stayed very true to form by recommending the speedmaster and reverso to a reviewer to a viewer from hong kong yes great collection would you rather own an amiga speedmaster man moon watch or a quartz reverso Ooh, good question yes Quartz is kind of fucking terminal. I'd have to say Amiga Speedmaster. You've got to get the Reverso manual wind. Sorry. You've got to do it. I bought a 2009 Rolex 114270. In the last, a couple of recommend, a couple of viewer emails ago, I was talking about the 14270. Well, there's the 114270, which is the later model. 
Too new. You're paying a big premium for that. I'd rather get the 14270. As my first decent watch last October, but swapped it a few months later for a 16200 with a black dial and index markers, which def definitely suits me better. They're both nice, but the date just has a date, which is very useful, and purchasing the next watch after the 114270 is tricky. Buying a Speedy when you already have the Explorer 1 is redundant be towards sports, while the Datejust Speedy combo covers more ground. Not sure what the second watch for an Explorer 1 owner should be. Also, when you look at the 114270 next to the 1016, the older 1016 looks cooler. Yeah, it is. But you're paying a huge premium. I mean, I I, 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 I think they're all cool. They're, 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 they are some really, really cool fuckers there. So I, I don't have a problem of, of that there. That's uh, that's really, really good there. Anyway, thanks for the videos. They've been excellent lately. Your speedy is very cool. I'm glad you got one. Thanks, Aaron. Thank you, Aaron. That's a great viewer email. Okay, fuckers, let's shoot to a commercial and we'll be right back. We specialize here in pre-owned Rolex watches. Rolex watch is a very special timepiece and we always do the servicing exactly as factory specifications. We buy a pre-owned piece and we put it into brand new condition. We have Rolex certified technicians working on that. We completely disassemble the piece, we adjust and polish and change every single part of the watch. You have to have certified watchmakers that know what they're doing. If you have an expensive car, you're just not going to bring it to any mechanic that doesn't know what they're doing. You spent $5,000, it's like if you put money in the safe deposit box. And one or two years from now, you will keep having your $5,000. We have to spend a lot of money to get all this equipment together, but makes me feel i doing what I'm supposed to do. It's not a question of money, it's my passion. Jewelers on time, simply the best. And the next viewer email is from Robert Spickerman. Robert Spickerman. Archie, hope this finds you well. Uh, he goes on to say there, uh, anyhow, just following up with you, sir. I need. Uh, if you need my previous email link, let me know. Also, I picked up a new acquisition, a Rolex Datejust 1601 circa 1975. I think it may have a service style, but either way, I'm happy. So this is where I currently stand with my collection, but not sure where to go next. I would like to start traveling with two watches. I'm not keen on c carrying a $3,000 watch with a $15 case. What would, you what would your recommendation be on a nice yet rugged case? I appreciate your opinion. Thanks, Rob. Mm. I know what you mean. I, I had this fucking little case that I used to put my stuff into and the fucking zip broke on it. And uh, I've, I've actually got a really cool Acadier service pouch, which is I normally travel with two watches. I wear one and I have one as my, uh, you know, if your mood changes. And uh, I've got a Cartier service pouch, which is uh, its quite a cool thing. I find that really useful for traveling. So, um, yeah, yeah, that's, uh, that's really great there. So, fuckers, this is viewer emails. I've been feeling a bit down. I've had some, some nastiness has come out there, some, some real haters in this world. You know, it's just, it's how it goes, fuckers. I'm Archie Luxury. This has been viewer emails. Tell me what you fuckers think of that. Nice one, Archie. Yeah, you're a bit flat today. <laughs>